Hi, welcome back to the second part of this uh, rendered perspective section uh, uh, exercise uh, using 3ds Max 2020. We've got the model in a, in a reasonable state to use now. Uh, some simple materials assigned. Uh, what we want to do now is set up the lighting, uh, then the cameras, and then the sectioning. Okay, so let's go with lighting first. I'm going to add in the top viewport, I'm going to add to the scene a light object, the sun position. Okay, and then just move to pretty much the center of the model, and then click and drag, and that will grow a, a compass symbol. Okay, get it as big as you can you can manage. In the view, okay. Let go and choose generally the north direction, and we'll tidy this up in a second. Okay. So the yeah, third click is the distance of the the what we call kind of the sunlight head from the compass. Uh, all of these can be tweaked uh, in the next step. So we've got the we've got the the object in. We now want to modify it. Okay, the radius is the size of the, the, the compass symbol, so if you want to make it a bit bigger you could. Okay, the north offset, this is this is the 4.84 degrees we mentioned earlier. So if I go back to here, so this is the 4.84 degrees. Okay, so we'll put that in here, 4.84. Okay, the distance is how far this icon is away from the model. Uh, it doesn't matter how far it is to be honest. Uh, keep it fairly close. Okay, we'll set ours to be, we'll, we'll go for something like 10.30. Okay, so I'm going to change the time here to 10 hours and 30 minutes. Okay, and we'll go for the summer solstice. Okay, but we don't want daylight saving time activated. Okay, because it's not winter time. It's the 21st of June. Okay, location is the critical thing. Completely different angles if you're in different parts of the planet. And firstly, we'll go to Europe. Okay, so you click on San Francisco CA and then you can choose Europe. And the closest city to us is Edinburgh. So we'll get there first. And then, if we want to make things a bit more accurate, we can put in the figures that I showed you previously as well. So I'm going to go for 56.5 degrees for the for the latitude and minus three degrees for the longitude. Okay, so 56.5 and longitude minus three. Okay, now the azimuth and the altitude are automatically set due to the time, uh, location and date, so we don't need to change those. Okay, so we've got a, a light source, uh, watch that you don't accidentally add a second one in, because it, it will make things very difficult to control. Right, the camera is probably the trickier item, okay, so we want to add a camera to the scene. Let's add camera and we'll go for a target camera. Okay, and initially I'm going to put it in at an awkward angle. So in the top view, I'm just making sure that the target and the camera aren't aligned at all. Uh, now I want to make it them exactly aligned. So we want to move the camera. We want to move it to a specific position. So you press F12. And that brings in the, the transform type in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move it down to a, a nice round number. So it should be this one. I can just pull that down, you can see it's the y axis there. So I'm going to make the y position 10. So that's 10 for the camera. Now click on the target and we set that to 10. So they're both exactly in line with each other now. 
Okay, we don't need the type in now. If we want to move the camera, then click the line that joins the two of them, and that way they'll both stay level. Okay, and I can use the corner of the gizmo here to allow me to position it. So you can see in the in the front view it's down on the ground at the moment. Use the yellow, use the red, sorry, okay, colours mixed up. Use the green arrowhead. We can lift that up till it's about halfway up the building, halfway up the model. Okay, let's have a look now what the camera can see. So I click on the perspective, the word perspective, cameras, camera 01. Okay, so you can see here that I'm either too close to the building or my lens isn't wide enough. Okay, I can see here that there's a little bit of difference in the gaps on either side, so I'm going to correct that while I can, I can see that. So I'll make them a bit more even. So I should be in the center of the view now. Okay, let's see what happens if we change the, the lens length of the camera. So just click off, then click just on the camera, modify, and you're looking for these stock lenses. And if I try 24, okay, I'm seeing much more of the building now. Okay. Using lower lenses than that, and the perspective is going to get too exaggerated. Let's change the shading here from edged faces to wireframe override. So, if you see what happens, if you put the lens down to, to too small, it makes the it makes the model look a bit over exaggerated. It makes it look wider than it really is. What I'd be better having is a is a nat, is a, sh a longer lens, say 35 millimeters but then use the dolly command here to back away from the model. So with dolly you click and drag downwards and that drags you away from the model. So it's just reducing the amount of perspective. So it's looking, looking a bit more realistic. Okay now there's a heck of a lot of wasted space here. That's all kind of rendering time that we don't really need. The model itself looks relatively square so a square render setup would be better. So you go to render setup and we're looking to change the custom size. So let's keep it relatively small just now. I'll go for 1000 by 1000. Okay, so I've got an aspect there of 1, so it's it's a 1 to 1, it's square. Okay, I can't see that showing up in the viewport yet until I right click camera 1 right click camera 1 show safe frames okay now you can see I could dolly forward okay and I'm going to keep it there I've got the distance on either side relatively the same okay I've got a bit of flexibility in the height so I'm going to move up a little bit dolly a little bit closer and that's where I'm going to leave it just now okay so we've, we've done everything we can as far as as, uh, as setting up the scene goes now what we need to deal with is the sectioning of the model okay now just deleting stuff is going to leave kind of ragged edges and overlaps it's not going to work too well a more sophisticated way is to group the model and then add the slice modifier to it. Now firstly you start off by selecting the objects and you must select only the geometry. Okay, Don't select cameras or lights. Okay, So I've got six geometry items. Okay, And then I group those. So it's group, group, and I'm going to call this far, so it's the far part of the model. It's the far, farthest away from the camera. Okay. Now, if I've grouped it correctly and got only geometry in there, if I modify it, drop the list down, I should see the slice modifier available. Slice. Okay. Let's put a cutting or a clipping plane onto the model. If we remove top, you'll see what it does. 
Okay, so it just hides the everything above that surface. Now we're really what needing to see into the side of the model. So if we rotate the, the clipping plane here, the slice plane, we'll be able to see inside the model. So to rotate it, you need to come back to this ribbon here, this blue strip, click it once, get your rotate command, switch on the angle snap, you can use key A for that as well if you want, so just the letter A does the same, and then in the front view, using either the outer grey or the inner yellow, you click on that circle and drag downwards and it's rotating in five degree increments. Okay, you see how that operates? Now, we could bring this a bit closer, closer to us in this view. So if we move it using the side view, or the front view there, okay, and we'll put it so we just don't see the, f the front set of columns or wall. Just put it just behind there. The closer in you go, the more accurate you can be with that. Okay, so we're just behind the columns. Okay, let's put this back onto a shaded view. Default shading, and there we have it. We've got our section. Okay, so you can see that happening live. Good. Now, we want, don't want to move the slicer anymore, so switch it off. So what we'll do now is just render it without the end wall on. Okay, and this gives you an unrealistic situation where there's too much light getting in. But I need you to see it so you can see the difference when we put the wall back in. Okay, before we render, we need to check the, the exposure controls. So you go to customize. Sorry, you don't go to customize, you go to rendering, exposure control. Okay, we're looking for the global exposure value. Okay, at the moment it's 15. That would that should work okay. Maybe put it down to 14.5, just knock it down a little bit. Let's a bit more light into the model. Okay, low numbers here mean a very very brightly lit scene. Okay. Now you need to remember to use the same exposure value for your different equinoxes and solstices. If you change the exposure value you're basically kind of overruling the, the, the accuracy of the daylighting. Okay. Activate the viewport that you want to render. Okay. We want to save the image so we can compare it and deal with it afterwards. So I'm going to use a file type that's a, J, a TIFF file. Okay, so this will be able to remember the shapes of the objects, the solid objects and any transparencies too. So let's call this, this was uh, uh, summer solstice 10.30 a.m. Okay, click back in here. Okay, and we're, we're trying to get this setup button to activate. Okay, so I've got the setup here. I want to store the alpha channel. And okay. Okay, so that's ready to go. We can close this window, and we're ready to render now. now the ART render at the moment is set to just a, a, comp a draft view, so it'll only render for a few seconds. So we can let it. We can let the machine render. Uh, when we come to do better quality ones, I'll pause the video at the right time. Okay, so we'll let it render. Okay, my no computer starts to get a bit noisy. The fans come on when it starts to do more complex work. But we can see the shadows, very crisp, very clean. Further away from the objects, they start to get gentler which is a very natural kind of way of generating shadows okay so the close to the object is casting the shadow they're sharp further away 
they get softer and softer. Okay, but there's way too much light getting into the model. That's unrealistic because there's walls on both sides of this. Okay, now we'll keep this for comparison. We can clone this window. Okay, we've got the clone the rendered window. Okay, and I can just put that out of out of harm's way for a second, just down here. Okay, so what we want to do in the top view is clone the model. Okay, so you click on the model, click on the group, edit, clone. We want a copy of it so we can control it differently and we'll call it near. So this is the stuff that's closest to the camera. Okay, on the near part of the, the model, on the near group, we remove the bottom. Okay, so do you see what's happened? We've reinstated the stuff that was missing. We've flipped the slicing. Now, right click the near model, object properties, make sure it says near here. We want to edit by object and we want to make it invisible to the camera so we take off the tick at visible to camera click OK Okay, so even though we can see it here when it goes to render it will ignore it but the material in the, that's in the way will cast the shadows so let's have a look what it looks like now ok render again shadow now so this is a, you know, a more realistic impression of how much light is going to get in at 10:30 in the morning when there's no framing in the windows whatsoever okay, so it's taking a bit longer now because there's, there's more objects kind of in the way it's having to think about it more so we'll, we'll let it render I'm just going to resize the, the window here so we can have them both side by side. Okay. No, it's not going to let me do that one until the render's finished. It's getting there, it's getting a bit more, getting less grainy the, the more iterations it does. Ten iterations is hardly any. No. You want a, a nice smooth rendering, you know, you're going to leave this for a good, good 10, 15 minutes. So, only in the the amount of time it has been given to render, we only managed 12 iterations. That's not very many. Okay, so we'll pull up this one and get it to the same kind of zoom level. Okay, there's so a huge difference in the amount of light coming in. Now, this looks more attractive in a way because it is better lit, but this is more realistic. Okay, I'm going to close those two down. So you could carry on and generate, you know, different different sunlight settings. Okay, moving this up. Okay, I wouldn't go above high. You'll be there forever. Uh, you can also set the length of time you want it to render if you want. If you just want to give 10 minutes to each one or 20 minutes, then use the time setting instead. Deciding how many iterations to render by is a bit tricky. Uh, I would just go by time. You've got something a bit more consistent then. Okay, so that's basically how the how the the setup for the sectioning goes. You know, if you add anything more to the model that's that's going to be in the way of the of the the, the near portion of the model, then really you kind of need to go back and set up the slicing again. But if I wanted to say I add some people to this so I could set the scale, then I would file and import merge and put some people in the maps folder here uh, somebody who looks like more normal there we go man here okay 
click the object. He's appeared at zero zero, okay, and if I put him into the scene. I'm not sure which way he's walking. Um, I'll have him kind of walking diagonally this way. Okay, his feet are on the ground. That's always something you should check. Make sure they're standing in the right position. Okay, and I'll do just start the render going here. I'm not going to 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 let you have to wait for this. Oh, we're missing a map here, that's okay. So what I need to do is tell the software where to find the pictures that go with that particular bit of model. So you do that in customize, configure project paths, external files, okay, I want to add from the desktop, I need to find the folder that I've been using. Go into the maps folder, use path, OK. So it should find the pictures of the man now. So render production, so use the render button that's got the lightning flash on it. We don't want it to go to the cloud. OK, so it's going to start rendering again. Let's just scroll down a bit so I can see. Once it gets past this first little stage, you should be able to see a person about there. There he is. Okay. So you can see you know, this is a pretty big space, and the, the students are going to be filling this with different kind of galleries and working out different ways of, of uh, circulating through it. Okay, so the third video will look at um, a little bit of stuff you can do in Photoshop thereafter.